Welcome to another edition of RCE. I'm your host, Brock Palin. I have again Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems, the Open MPI Project, and the author of the wonderful MPI Performance Blog. <laughs> well, there you go. It is a fabulous blog, and I truly recommend everybody read the pearls of wisdom that drip out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it is a great place to kind of get a, a view into what's happening in the upcoming MPI standards and stuff. You yes, put comments the deep, on deep, dark, secret world of MPI. Mm-hmm. And we have a link to that blog off of the RCE website at rce-cast.com. Um, and from there, there are RSS feeds and the regular iTunes subscription link if you're into that sort of thing. And there's also a nomination form where you can recommend people we should talk to or topics we should talk about. And actually, that's something about today. Normally, we talk about a software project. Today, we're talking about something all of us had to go through at one time who run a cluster. We're talking to brand new high-performance computing sysadmins. Yeah, ch- change it up a little bit today. So it ch- change the focus off learning about new and interesting things in HPC, but rather talk to people who are, are new to HPC um, and and see how we as a community are doing about, you know, welcoming new people and getting them up to speed on education and hardware and software and stuff like that. Because, Brock, you and I have been doing this for forever. It's so easy to get jaded and to forget that, you know, it's it's actually our responsibility to bring new people in. So, yeah. Yeah. So we were supposed to have uh, two admins um, that were nice enough to agree to join us. But I'm guessing... One is unavailable, probably because of a problem with his high-performance computing cluster, as we've all been there. <laughs> we've even canceled one of these recordings before because I had a system not quite literally on fire, but it was very, very close. <laughs> um, so our guest that we have on right now, and if our other guest becomes available, we'll call him in later, is Andre Gautier from Yale, if I have that right. I that might not check that correct. straight here. Nice, nice job. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and specifically why did Yale decide to get into the high-performance computing realm? Uh, well, first off, uh, I've been in IT for uh, over a decade. Um, I was a sysadmin before that, uh, before HPC, and uh, I worked for a research lab that had uh, a very um, – had uh, big time, huge re- um, compute requirements um, that uh, they were they were, they were constantly running out of um, CPUs and storage, and they had multiple discrete servers, and so I saw an opportunity to fix their their problem, and and uh, I thought of HPC, and that's sort of how I got started. But they're they're they had. Uh, they had dramatic requirements for CPU and storage, and they were I/O bound, and they had many discrete servers. So um, there was constant manual load balancing going on. So users shuffling from one server to another, and it wasn't ideal. So um, as you can see, that that would probably be a good fit for HPC because their a lot of their processes were were not necessarily parallel but sequential. So they would do parameter sweeps hundreds at a time. So it was perfect for HPC. So what, uh, what department, what kind of field is this in? Is this somebody who, you know, HPC just doesn't normally occur to, like uh, well, you know, this physics? Is a, or- when I first uh, started in this lab, this is a, a computer science lab in, at UMass uh, that specialized in search engines. Uh, so at, at the time, Google hasn't, Google wasn't on the scene, and a lot of people weren't talking about HPC. So it wasn't something. It wasn't something that someone would think of instantly, you know, as a solution, a possible solution to their uh, their dilemmas. So. So the requirements for this cluster then was the ability to have large I/O and then to run uh, large numbers of serial jobs or, or perhaps even uh, embarrassingly parallel jobs. Is that right? That's correct. Um, and so uh, I knew that there had to be a better way of doing this uh, rather than manually shuff- shuffling users back and forth and moving data back and forth. Um, so I came up w- with an idea of s- stringing a few computers together 
and uh, I started looking at schedulers and things like that, and then I sort of, you know, came across a lot of HPC stuff and figured that's the way to go. The BNIO bound, that, that's a little different. Most people always think about what's your top Linpack performance and how many CPUs and how many cores do you have and what's your clock speed. Yeah, so I wasn't at that level of HPC yet, right? So it was more about how do I solve their problems so that they get uh, better throughput in their research uh, rather than always waiting on I.O. or having to move stuff around. So it's more of a practical solution, right, rather than I want just high performance. So it also solved our problems of having downtimes on servers that people relied on. So uh, when I first started, we had a bunch of big, uh, big Solaris boxes, you know, and people would log into that and do their research, run their processes, and they would do that, um, you know, on multiple machines. And sometimes they would hog more than one. Uh, sometimes uh, one would be completely loaded and they want to move on to another one, and so they would have to copy their data. So I thought, first, we have to centralize these resources. Um, and NFS was way too slow uh, for what they were doing. Um, so it seemed at the time. And so, uh, so this sort of just came into fruition just over time as I thought about it. It's like, okay, I want to centralize the storage. I want to, I want to create easy access for the researchers so they don't have to jump from machine to machine. And I really was naive about HPC and then it sort of, you know, fell into it. And I started putting together what our requirements were going to be for this thing. Um, uh, so what so, kind of requirements did you end up with? What, what, what was the final set of things that you started shopping around with? Well, it had to be NFS for worst case scenario. At best case scenario, it had to beat our local drives, which at the time were not that great. Um, so I knew I could do it. Um, so NFS, you know, I think... Back then, I was getting, like, not really horrible performance. I, you know, we were just getting into gig E, so it was, like, 20 megs per second at first, I think. And uh, the disk was not that great either. Local drives, we had um, RAID 5, SCSI attached. I don't remember what the RPMs were, but we weren't getting more than 40 to 50 megs per second, so... Um, our, so the new infrastructure that would be in place could easily beat that, you know. Um, so that was my worst case scenario, uh, and it, so I knew that NFS on a dedicated network could beat that performance if I couldn't get a, a, a cluster file system to. So, like I said before, you're talking about your main focus here was I/O bound because you understood your specific problem. One thing we'd like to talk right. about is is your experience with vendors getting quotes, even knowing what to get quotes for or bidding for things. Here's what they always ask me. Well, what's your application? We'll give you this set of tunings. I have 500 unique users on the cluster I run. <laughs> None of them run the same thing. <laughs> so, Right, yeah, I know. That's, that's, that's sort of after. So that was in the beginning, right? And so... As we matured a little bit more into that space, um, we knew exactly what our parameters were um, for the given processes. So we, you know, for the next gen HPC that for our lab, I had you know five megs per second per process, um, and if that if we were to have eight cores, that would be like forty megs per second. And if you had, you know, X amount of nodes and you multiply that by the nodes and that's what our, our file system would have to deliver. Um, but after that, you know, after it was a success where I was working, other people wanted to mimic what we were doing. So we started building more generic uh, general resources. And that's where, you know, I, I had to generalize uh, the performance more. Is the group you work with now a, a generic... Research computing resource for Yale. Yes, yeah, that's right. So it's a, it's the HPC group for all of Yale. So it's uh, for all the research scientists at. Yale.